Yes, yes, people, you know what time it is, you know what it is, G, and we are back in the building, and we, yes, we are here for episode five of top five under 23 ballers of the week, as per usual, taking a look, Premier League, La Liga, Bundesliga, Serie A, and League A, um, got a couple new names in here, um, players that we may um, have never seen before, players I've never, never seen play as well, which is why I love doing, you know, this weekly show. And obviously players that some of you may already be acquainted with, returning names and things like that as well. Guys, before we obviously jump into the show, please make sure you like, share and subscribe. As mentioned before, we are on the road to 900 subscribers. So make sure, if you haven't done so already, that you're smashing that subscribe button. And let's get into it. So, yes, yes, people, we are back uh, for the top five under 23 ballers of the week. Hope you guys are well. Hope you guys are well. Um, as I mentioned before, please, if you could just, just hit that like button, if we can just hit that like button for me. Um, hope you guys obviously enjoying the segment. I'm enjoying it myself, you know, taking a look at, you know, a couple of players that I've never really heard of, <laughs> to be honest with you, which is why I love these kind of things, um, you know, these kind of shows, players that, you know, would have never have seen play, you know, if I, you know, didn't do the show, players that, you know, popping up on the radar, some players who blatantly have been, you know, have been about, you know, have been doing their thing, you know, for the last, you know, couple of seasons, potentially in academies and also making their way through, you know, to first teams and stuff like that. But, you know, ultimately seeing them, seeing some of these guys, you know, perform, some of them, obviously, we're going to be seeing quite a lot, you know, during the season. Some of them are obviously obvious, you know, like the Bellinghams of this world kind of thing, obviously still young, but, you know, playing for Real Madrid and, you know, at the moment performing really really well but in a general sense i think it is really really good to kind of just see you know the different the differential um the, sorry different type of players you know that we just might not see you know on a regular basis man so yeah man um hope you guys obviously continue to like the show um please 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 if you could just as i mentioned man just just show your appreciation just smash that like button man if i can get you know 10 to 15 likes um on this video, that would be much appreciated. So, this week, obviously, taking a look at the top five and the 23 ballers, um, and we've got player on here. I think we'll start off there, actually, um, because it was an emphatic, emphatic victory. Uh, we're going to start off in the Premier League. Um, I mean, how, how do I even introduce... Uh, it's not even just this player, by the way, because there was... Um, Quite a lot of other players who could have gone on there, um, but obviously, just in terms of the age profile that we're obviously looking at, you know, for this, um, I picked this player for, you know, the um, for the top five um, ballers of the week, and that is Anthony Gordon, Newcastle United winger. Um, I mean, the biggest result of the weekend, the craziest result really of the weekend, whatever you want to kind of say, you know, in regards to like Sheffield United, however, you, how, however you think or however badly you think that they actually are, to lose 8-0, come on, man, that's brazy. The, hence why the Manchester United, you know, 7-0 loss last season. Yes, I am still bringing that up. But hence why that loss was obviously so crazy as well, because it's like, what? 7-0? And then you guys go and lose 8 nil. Like, Bournemouth with losing 9 nil. Like, it's crazy, man. So when you hear these kind of results, and I think Newcastle had eight different scorers in the game. I don't know if that is an actual Premier League record, but I can't remember the last time there were eight different scorers, you know, in a game. So, you know, absolutely crazy victory for Newcastle. Um, played, of course, they, they played off the park. Um, in terms of a performance-wise, it probably wasn't really... Again, like I said, no, no matter what you think about Sheffield United, it has to be kind of really up there, if not the top two performances of the weekend. To go and smash a team in the top league 8-0, you're doing something right. <laughs> Do you get what I'm trying to say? You're re you really are doing something, you know, something right. Um, but today we're taking a look at Anthony Gordon, uh, moved to, obviously to Newcastle from Everton, local lad. 
uh, been getting a lot of stick, has been getting a lot of stick. Um, from I, I would say, I mean, more so from Everton fans, maybe they're just, you know, potentially being a little bit salty and stuff like that. But he has been getting stick as well from Newcastle fans. Maybe they wanted to see a bit more from him. You know, maybe they wanted to see him, you know, provide whatever it is, whether it be the goals or and or assists. But I feel like this season he started really, really well. I think, like, he's kind of showing you know, the maybe the promise that he had when he first came through at Everton, you know, I feel like he's kind of finally actually showing that, you know, had a decent, of well, he himself had a very decent under-21 tournament as well with England, where they went on to obviously win that tournament. And I feel like he's taken that form into the season, you know, for Newcastle. And as much as Newcastle may not be flying in the way that they may maybe want to be, I feel like he's been really, really good. I, I don't know if he would be considered to be their best player. You'd have to ask a Newcastle fan. But for me, he really has, you know, shown some really, really good glimpses. But in regards to the game against Sheffield United, uh, 78 minutes played, got, him, got himself a goal and an assist in the game. Uh, shot accuracy of three out of four shots, really, really good. Six recoveries in the game, two out of two successful dribbles, uh, one big chance created, and he won seven out of 12 ground duels. So again, showing both offensively and defensively, you know, the kind of work that he can obviously put in. And as I mentioned before, I do feel like he is that kind of player, you know, um, when he is on song anyway, when he is on song and, you know, he's doing his thing and all that kind of stuff, I feel like this is the kind of, maybe not an eight mil every single week, but, you know, he can put in, you know, these kind of, you know, these kind of performances. Obviously playing over there on that left wing um, as well. Um, yeah, I think, I think like, if he continues anyway, if he does continue, he'll make that left wing position his own. And then it'll be Harvey Barnes, obviously, who is a new signing, who's going to have to fight for a place. He's going to have to fight for a place. Obviously, he just come through from Leicester City. So, you know, he's still got to kind of work his way into the team. But it's a good, you know, that, that's a pretty decent left wing to kind of have, you know, for a team like Newcastle. But just in a general sense, I, I believe anyway, it's a decent, you know, left wing options that you could put, that you can possibly have when we think about all the left wingers that you could have out there and we're talking about premier leagues um premier league proven so to speak young players as well um and obviously we're not talking about the the top echelon of type of left wingers like the Vinicius and Mbappe's and stuff like that but th those two are decent man and I feel like it's going to be I feel like if those two battle it out you know between themselves you know in the season it's going to be a really really good battle you know amongst them and obviously just here his heat map obviously for the game in itself you guys can obviously you know see there on that left wing you know really working down um that side he gave Sheffield United absolute hell you know in this kind of game and I think that they're going to be extremely happy you know to see in the back of Anthony Gordon but yeah for me I just think that you know with not even more so just even that performance like I said I feel like his performances have been getting better and better you know throughout the season uh, uh, well, really, since since the back end of last season, maybe he was starting something. Then he obviously had the summer, and then obviously now starting this season, I feel like he's done really, really well. And obviously, Bogle and um, I cannot pronounce that right back's name. Um, so Hodzik is what is what I'm going to call him, um, just to not embarrass myself. But um, yeah, he gave them hell, man. So like I mentioned, he's def they're definitely going to be happy, you know, to see you know, to see the back of him. But that is obviously the Premier League. Now, let's take a look and, excuse me, there's a fly in the bloody room. Um, if we go to, let's head, let's head over to League A. Um, now, the next player I'm going to bring up, this is the player that pff, most of the, in terms of fan bases anyway, most of the fan bases of the top clubs, you know, including Chelsea, uh, they really, really wanted this signing. Uh, they really wanted this player. Plays in midfield. But you guys, you may be able to guess it. And that's obviously Manuel Agate. A lot of people wanted this guy. He started pretty decently for PSG. PSG haven't been doing too great, if I'm being 100% honest with you. I don't think they've been doing too well. I don't think they, you know, obviously I know they won in their first game in the Champions League and everything. But just in a general sense, I don't think Newcastle have been doing that well. Newcastle. I don't think PSG, should I say, sorry, have been doing that well. But in this game, you know, Derby against um, Marseille as well. Yo, they really did put the put the um, put that performance in, and it's crazy as well when you think about it. And I'll show you guys the. Um, I'll show, in fact, I'll show you guys actually the um, the actual team team lineup. This is why I'm so shocked when it does come to you know um, when it does come to PSG. If you look at the, if you guys look here, 
They're third, obviously, in the league now, obviously getting that victory um, behind Nice, behind Brest as well. Brest are having a really, really fantastic start to their season. Um, but in a general sense, watching PSG play, obviously, it's a new manager. Luis Enrique has obviously come in there. They've kind of changed their philosophy in terms of the type of players that they sign. Obviously, they're still getting good players. Let's not get twisted. They're still getting good players, but they're not going out there and, you know, trying to sign, you know... Um, Oh, I don't think it showed you guys the league table. I'll show you guys there. So, yeah, as I mentioned before, they're third in the league. Brest, obviously, top. But, yeah, as I mentioned, like, they're not going out to get the usual, you know, the Messi's, the Neymar's, and Cavani's, Di Maria's, Ibrahimovic's, you know, Marquinhos, and, you know, all of these kind of players. They're not really doing that anymore. I felt like they're going down a kind of different path, you know, this season, which I, I actually like, because I'm just like, it was just becoming too much of a shambles, man, to be honest with you, when it came to... um. PSG, you know, it was just too many issues in regards to where the hell are you guys going? You haven't been able to win anything of significant of significance, you know, with PSG, uh, with the players that you have got. I know what you tried to do, but maybe you need to go down a different route. And you look at that front three, you know, Colo Moani, Dembele, Mbappe, that French front three right there. That's, I mean, that could be the French front, the France um, front three for the for the next tournament. To be honest with you, you got Zaire Emery in the middle there as well. Fantastic young player coming through. Barcola obviously signed from Lyon. Hakimi obviously there on the right side. A young player, Marquinhos, Scunia, and Hernandez, experienced players at the back. They were really, really good defenders, and then obviously Donnarumma, very, very good goalkeeper. I feel like now they got a right balance, and in Ugarte. you know, they were able to pick up. You know, in my opinion, one of the best defensive midfielders out there. You know, and um, Maybe he's the type of defensive midfielder that everybody wanted because he's, quote unquote, the destroyer. And I think everybody, you know, in the summer anyway, that's what everybody was looking for. They were looking for someone to be, you know, that kind of destroyer. And, you know, in this game, I felt like he was, you know, he was fantastic. You know, watching the highlights of the game, like he was just everywhere, man. Honestly, he was just everywhere. Played 90 minutes, four out of four accurate long balls, nine recoveries, nine out of 12 ground jewels. Um, obviously, um, obviously, one six out of eight tackles, fifty-three out of fifty-seven passes, five passes into the final third. You know, really, really good and dominant performance. You know, in the middle of the park, and obviously, as I mentioned before, absolutely everywhere, both defensively helping out a little bit further forward, but just being that guy in the middle of the park. And that's why I say, you know, not just this performance, but just in a general sense, that is probably the reason why so many teams were and so many. Let me not even say teams, because I don't know how many teams were actually genuinely after him. Fan bases were really, really looking at all the tacticals on Twitter. And, you know, just people in a general sense really, really wanted, you know, someone like Manuel Garte. And for me, look, Luis Enrique, one of my favourite managers out there. Do I love the way he plays football. At first, you know, the beginning of the season, the way they were kind of starting off, I was a little bit shocked. I was a little bit surprised because I felt like you've got the team here. I expect you guys to be doing a lot better. But like any new team under a new coach, under a new manager, a new regime, new system and stuff like that, they do need time to obviously, you know, gel. And maybe he's starting to get, you know, his message across. And maybe we may potentially see a better PSG, you know, in the long in, in the long run, you know, throughout the season. Who knows? Dark horses for the Champions League. I have no idea, man. I have no idea. But for me, Ugarte, really, really good performance um, by him, obviously, against Marseille at the weekend. So next up, uh, we'll take a look. Let's head on over to... Ba -dum -ba -dum. Let's head over to La Liga. Let's head on over to La Liga. And we're going to take a look at Savio. This, the, he is an interesting individual. Plays for Girona. Uh, they faced off, obviously, against Mallorca. Um, again, I think this is the second game in a row now where he's got himself a goal and an assist, you know, in this match. If I show you guys um, uh, the game in itself, uh, just so you guys can obviously have a look. Obviously, Girona running out 5-3 victors. Uh, let's take this off for you guys. Ba -dum -ba -dum. Boom. So <clears throat> let me enlarge that actually for you guys. So you guys can see obviously playing over there on that left wing. Now, Savio, interesting individual, very, very interesting individual. I like him. I think he's a very decent young player. But he's having like an interesting career. He is technically from everything, everything I've seen, and I think I've done a scout report, um, a player watch on him before, but from everything I'm seeing, he's still technically contracted to Troyes, who are obviously, um, they're part of the City um, City Football Group uh, French team. 
Um, he's still technically contracted to them, but he went on loan to PSV, obviously, last last season. And this season has gone on loan again to Girona. So, obviously, in your head, you're thinking, someone like him, he's got bags of ability, by the way, good dribbling ability, good close ball control, can find a pass, obviously can finish. As, he's got a decent finish, should I say. Um, likes to find that kind of space over there on that left-hand side as well. You know, can play a little bit in the pockets at times. Um, but... It's just weird. When I look at a player like this, I'm like, how come you've been loaned? It's like he's being loaned out to clubs better than the team that he's currently at. And I always I always find those kind of things seriously weird. But ultimately, that might just be obviously what Manchester City, you know, are trying to do with their whole, you know, City group thing and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But anyways, to the game in itself, 75 minutes played, got himself a goal and assist, two big chances created, four out of five ground rules, one. So again, defensively working really, really well. 23 out of 27 passes, two out of three shots and four recoveries in the game. And if I can find his heat map, as I mentioned here, like I said, likes to play further forward, obviously, but defensively he can obviously help out and can play in those pockets, you know, playing as that kind of, I don't like calling it, but I guess inside forward, so to, or inside winger, inverted winger. However, whatever football manager says basically on that side, that's the position, you know, that he obviously plays. But again, like I said, man, it was really, a, a, for me, it was a really, really good performance. And this season, last season, he didn't really get too many games for PSV, wasn't really able to showcase, you know, what he was all about. But I feel like this season, he's going to be able to do that. And with Girona, you know, performing pretty decently, you know, this season, will he be able to kind of, maybe put himself up for sale, you know, potentially, you know, maybe um, show that he can actually perform at that top level, you know, who knows, but at the moment he's starting really, really well. And I really, really do like, you know, the performances that he has obviously been putting in. <clears throat> so now second to last, uh, let's head on over to, um, let's head on over to Italy. Let's head on over to Italy. And we're going to be taking a look at defender, plays for Udinese, uh, Irish defender, uh, Fetsi Ibusele. Now, obviously, he has got um, African descent, I believe. I believe, yeah, I believe it's African, uh, African descent. But um, very, very good performance at the weekend. And it's crazy because they lost 2-0. <laughs> and you'd think, how can he have a good performance if he lost 2-0? <clears throat> but obviously, you can see here, you know, um, just in terms of, uh, let me just get this up actually for you guys. Du -du 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 -du. Um, he was named, he was actually named in the team of their uh, team, uh, Syria team of the week actually as well for this uh, last game week. So that kind of gives you some type of indication as to, you know, how good his own performance was. 90 minutes plays, three out of three tackles, one, one, uh, one out of one shot um, accuracy, three out of three successful dribbles. He won 12 out of the 14 ground jewels he faced, three out of five accurate crosses, two out of three aerial jewels, and made seven recoveries in this game. Now, as I mentioned before, they lost the game anyway so a part of it is like mm, does it even really matter but in terms of the you know the the winger he had to come up against in Brickello, you know he, listen Brickello didn't really get any much change out of him to be honest with you hence why he had to get substituted you know in the game and he was a havoc going the other way I feel like obviously as a team you know Udinese didn't really do that well um he almost felt like you know we're not again when I watched the highlights I don't know man it almost felt like Fiorentina had a bit too much quality at times but then at the same time I'm like, ah, you know what, Udinese, you, you just needed really just that quality. You don't even have to be quality, but just someone with a bit more oomph, a bit up front. And I feel like you could you could have at least got a draw. Do you get what I'm trying to say? But ultimately, it didn't happen like that. Um, I felt like Fiorentina did provide just that little bit of quality, you know, in the game. But Ibusele, I felt like was really, really good Irish international, as I mentioned before. Um, and you can see heat map all up and down that right hand side, man. He was yeah, he's a strong runner as well. That's I, I again didn't really know anything about him. Heard his name, but when in terms of yeah, heard his name, didn't really know. You know, is he good? Is he bad? Is he this or whatever? I'm not saying that he's some fantastic player. I'm not going to say that you know he's going to go on to do amazing things. I hope he obviously does for his own career. But in a general sense, you know, didn't really know too much about him. Just that he was an um, um, he's Irish, and that was the only thing I really knew. Um, but in the obviously the system that they kind of play, he kind of occupies that like 
he can play obviously he can play uh, he plays right back but he can play obviously right wing back right midfield you know if they're going to play with that five you know in that kind of uh, midfield there again all depends on the opposition and things like that so you know he's quite versatile and can play in a couple of positions which obviously might stand him in good stead you know in you know in the future defensively I do think he is quite solid he's very very strong um, quite quick on the grounds but I just think that he seems to be quite smart he does seem like to be quite a smart um, individual again just basing this purely off of this game in itself. So who knows, he might absolutely stink it up next week and, you know, score three on goals. I have no idea. But in terms of looking at this performance and, you know, the scout reports, you know, on him, looks like a very fairly decent player, man, fairly decent player. But of course, Udinese did lose that game which obviously isn't good for them. But he himself really, for me, was actually, you know, the standout performer. But we move on. Last but not least, and that is heading on over to the Bundesliga. Look, taking a look at um, Enzo Milot or Milot. Um, good, uh, good little player. Good, good, good little player. Um, 21 years of age for a uh, uh, French youth international. Um, it's, it's so funny when I talk about Stuttgart, obviously Liverpool signing um, Wataro Endo, uh, Endo from, uh, from their... And obviously, when anytime I have to talk about them, I'm always like, huh. it's just funny now. They pop up a lot more in my any type of research or anything I do. They just seem to be a team who just pop up just randomly all the time now. But you know, it is what it is. I'm not really too fussed, you know, about that. But yes, in regards, you know, to um, Enzo, uh, they faced off against again a team that Liverpool faced during the summer, uh, SV Darmstadt. Um, in their uh, Liverpool faced them obviously in pre season. Obviously, you guys can see here they ended up winning the game 3-1, uh, Miliot getting himself a goal. Um, in that attacking midfield position, um, I felt like he was really, really good in that position. He, and he didn't just occupy, like, he was like a cultured midfielder. You know, he was um, a midfielder who was helping out, obviously, in the middle of the park anyway, in a defensive in defensive situations, but also helping out the striker because he was kind of playing more as a lone striker. Um, and um, I just felt like, in terms of his overall game, his overall game was really, really good. You know, his overall game, it just felt like he knew where he needed to be positionally. He understood his assignment. He understood the defensive side of his game. He understood in terms of helping to be an attacking, you know, threat in the game. Got himself a goal, 53 out of 58 passes, six out of nine ground duels, six recoveries, five passes into the final third, 73 touches and three out of four successful dribbles. As I mentioned before, it just felt like a proper cultured performance. You know, it felt like it felt like almost like a... Uh, um, a senior mature performance, you know, from him, you know, in the middle of the park. And, you know, for me, I felt like, you know, totally deserved, you know, to to be placed upon this list. There might have been other players that maybe potentially could have got it, you know, they might have scored a goal here and assist there and stuff like that. But he obviously got himself, you know, a goal. And I felt like in the 78 minutes that he did actually play in the game, Yo, man, he, he, he was pretty decent, man. You can see here by, um, ooh, get up for you guys again. Uh, you can see here by his heat map, again, like I mentioned before, obviously playing a little bit further forward than everybody else because he seemed like, it seemed like to me, he was kind of more tasked with attacking midfield, but obviously at times you've got to be that support striker. You know what I mean? You may even have to run beyond, you know, the striker, but he had the engine to be able to do so. He had the good ball control to be able to do so, good passing range also to be able to do so. And then obviously, again, on the defensive side of the game, he was more than willing to be able to get himself back and obviously help out defensively. And I felt like that was one of the main reasons as to, you know, why I kind of had to put him in there. But obviously... That concludes this week's episode five, uh, top five ballers of the week. So if we quickly just run through them now for you guys, obviously, you know, Newcastle's Anthony Gordon, uh, Girona's uh, Savio, PSG's Manuel Agate, Udinese's Fetsi Ubusele, and Stuttgart's Enzo Milot. Um, I felt like, yeah, like I mentioned before, there were some players in there that I've never really taken a, a real good look at. Some players, obviously, I already know Anthony Gordon, Savio, Ugarte, you know, knowing these guys already um, and seeing what they're doing, you know, as the season kind of, you know, continues on. It's going to be interesting when we get to, like, you know, um, episode 38. Um, uh, obviously, the Premier League will still be continuing, but I might I might potentially stop it a bit sooner if all the other leagues are done. Um, but it would just be interesting to see, you know, as the season kind of progresses, are there any obviously names that we've had in here before? Are there players that you've seen too many times? Are there players you've only ever seen once and who only appeared once, you know, in the, in this um, 
in this kind of series? Why did they only appear once? What's kind of happened to them? You know, we might do a little recap, you know, maybe the best performances that we've seen in terms of game weeks. We'll, we'll wait and see, obviously, as the time kind of goes on. But guys, thank you for obviously tuning in. Uh, make sure you're smashing that like button. Make sure you share. Make sure you subscribe. That's top five under 23 borders of the week. Episode five done and dusted. Guess what, baby? We out. <laughs>